Welcome to Fred Achando Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly subscribe to our channel if you are watching for the first time. Someone gave me a challenge and he told me to summarize Raila's speech in Nigeria. Now that speech is long and I was wondering whether I would play the whole of it. And I just realized that I can't play everything that Raila said. And I listened to that speech bit by bit and after a lot of scrutiny I realized that Raila's speech was full of hope, optimism and a warning. And that speech targeted about five or four or five categories of people that I want us to look at. Number one, Raila wanted to make things straight because there has been a lot of fallacy that have been peddled in Africa that Raila has been losing elections and he's got this pen chart of rejecting every election results since 2007. And those who peddle this cheap rumor do not want to say the truth. Even back at home, those who worked with Raila and were on his side in 2007 have now diverted the attention, they have changed the narrative and they say that Raila never won. Yet they were the same same people who maintained that Raila Odinga won but because he always places the interest of the country first before his personal interest, he decided to let go and he shook hands with the then president, the late Mwai Kibaki, and they worked together under that coalition government. So Raila wanted to make things straight that whatever has been said about him is not true. I did an analysis yesterday where I presented Julius Malema reading a riot act to Raila Muludinga and telling him to step down that he has uh, contested for very many years and he has been losing so it is time maybe to anoint someone to go ahead. Now, I realized that there are a couple of leaders, people like Malema, who are talking because they don't understand what is happening in our country and you can forgive them. But someone was challenging me in this channel that maybe Malema is not ignorant of what, you know, what is happening in Kenya. He is only talking like that because he knows very well that Raila is a friend to Cyril Ramaphosa who is the president of uh, South Africa and they don't see eye to eye with Malema. So Malema is uh, placing his anger where it does not belong just because Raila is a buddy, is an ally of uh, their president, so that he feels that uh, Raila should be his enemy. I don't know how true that is. So Raila made it very clear what has been happening and I, I believe that those who watched and listened to his speech will now have a change of mind and a change of thought about it because you know when you hear this uh, story from one side it's very difficult to judge. I think most of them will now understand that maybe Raila is not as bad as many African states have said because most of the sitting presidents sometimes just want to demonize him. Now, after making things straight, the other thing that Raila wanted to do is to try and encourage the opposition leaders, quote unquote, those who are trying to contest against the sitting presidents. Because in Africa, it is very, very difficult to defeat a sitting president because he or she will be controlling all the instruments of power. They are the commander in chief, they control the military and the police. They control the bodies that manage elections in those countries. If it is in Kenya, it is the IEBC, Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, and they always swear allegiance to the sitting presidents. They can always be bought, their allegiance can be bought with money, intimidation and everything. So Raila was giving a rallying call to those who are uh, contesting against sitting presidents not to give up, to carry on with the fight. Because sometimes 
if you fight against a sitting president, the powers that be, it is not very easy. In fact, there are countries and nations in our continent where opposition leaders have been killed or they are fleeing and they are no longer. Some of them have gone on asylum. They are now living in other countries because they fear their lives. They fear for their lives. So Raila was encouraging them to keep on fighting because nothing comes easy. And the message was also meant to encourage the followers of these opposition leaders. Because the strength of any opposition leader, the strength of any leader who is trying to battle with the sitting president lies with the people. And if the people are weak, if the people are not courageous enough, if the people are not ready to face the government, if they are not ready to face the police with the brutality of tear gas and all the bullet, then the war can not be won. So he was telling both the leaders and the followers to be charged to make sure that they use constitutional methods when they face the battle. Raila's message was also meant to the sitting presidents who have been in power for, for, from, for forever, let me just say so. Because he was saying that sometimes back in 1980s, there were a new crop of leaders who we welcomed as new fresh of breath because we thought that they would liberate Africa. But since then, they have uh, turned to be African tyrants. They rule with tyranny, they kill or intimidate the opposition leaders, and it is like they got married to presidency, and the only thing that can set them apart is death. I don't want to call any name because I don't want to be an enemy of your president. Here in Kenya, we live in peace and democracy, so we, we work within certain boundaries of, of democracy, so I don't want to call any other leader. But from where you sit, if you are an African champion, you know very well that your leader has been in power for, for now time immemorial. Hafadali Yetu ya Kenya. It can be rigged, but at least we see new faces every day. You know, you, you would rather have someone who rigs, but you see different faces. Rather than having someone forever, you were born and you, find, you found him in power, he's still there. Some of them can't even walk. They are very, very tired. They are, I don't, I don't know what to say. So Raila was also giving them a message to remember back where we came from when we had the spy for, for, for multi-party democracy. Some of them fought sitting presidents to be in those seats. They have refused to relinquish power and they keep on soiling their hands with blood, killing people, corruption and everything. And then Raila also targeted the West. This has been his song every day. Raila blames the West because we understand that we have a crop of Western leaders who have become dictatorial. They come under the guise of preaching democracy in our continent. Yet it is not democracy. In fact, it is a very, very worst, the, the worst form of, of dictatorship, where they will be there to determine who becomes the president or the prime minister and all that. After they have robbed you of your victory, then they will be coming to create some less offices so that people can share power. Because they understand very well that they put cronies in those seats who will help them achieve their agenda. So his message was also meant to go to the West. The, the, the US and the Britain are the worst of them all. Then Raila also targeted investors and because he said that even investors themselves have always indicated that when we have a legitimately elected president, the investors are confident with him because he will not interfere with their businesses. But they are saying that in the event that you are investing with an illegitimate government, the same way they interfered with the elections, the same way there is a likelihood that they will interfere with your investment. They can just decide to be dictatorial and they want to have shares in your company by force. They will, you know, all kind of things. So Raila targeted those. And the last one, in fact, it was like he was encouraging investors to look for leaders who they can invest with or to unite and help leaders who are very weak, those who are being tortured by the powers that be, maybe to help them so that when they are sent to power, they can invest together. And the last message was targeted back at home. You see, Raila had declared that he does not recognize the legitimacy of President William Ruto. And so when he flew out of the country, he still reminded them. Because he started by saying that the very topic that he wants me to talk about 
is the same thing that we are grappling grappling with back in the country. So he sent a warning and he, he, he told he told them and it, it, it to me it is a, a coded language, a coded message to our to our president back at home that Aluta continua. He is not going to to backtrack. He's coming for it and he believes that if it works for Kenya, it will work for Africa. Why? He remembers how in 2007, when the elections were bungled, the West forced them for a handshake. And later, that is, that is what now was being ad adopted in, in our continent. In Zimbabwe, where the late Mugan Shangirai and, 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 and uh, the former president, Robert Mugabe, Robert just rigged election and then they were called, Rela was called to show them how handshake can work. And Rela feels that they, they set a very bad president. He reg I think he regrets. So he's saying that right now, Things must be made straight so that if any other African country should emulate, then they will emulate the best practice. In summary, that is what I felt about Raila's speech. It's long, we can't play it here. here. If you listened to it, please share with me in the comment section what you think about the speech. What is it that maybe I've left out? That is my take, ladies and gentlemen.